All right, so we're going to do another example, this time involving unit vectors. Um, we're given two vectors here, V and W, and the first thing we want to do is find unit vectors in the directions of those vectors. Um, we have the prescription for doing so down here. I accidentally erased my quotation mark. There we are. Um, so to get a unit vector in the direction of a given vector, we simply multiply by 1 over the magnitude of the original vector. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then the next part is to find a vector of magnitude 5 in the direction of um, w. I think the book says v, but let's do w. Just, you know, why not? Change it up a little bit. Um, you can see the example using v in the book. You now will see w as well. Okay. All right. So starting with the first part, let's get the unit vectors. All right. So v is the vector 3, 1. And that implies that the magnitude of v will be the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 10. And that means we can take the unit vector, uh, well, let's call it maybe uv, unit vector in the direction of v, to be 1 over root 10 times 3, 1. Okay. And you can leave that scalar out front. If you want to, you can bring it in. Um, I find that generally just kind of makes things a bit more cluttered. Um, I guess if you really feel compelled, you could also rationalize the denominator, but nobody ever bothers with that, so we'll just leave it as is. Okay. Um, now, w is the vector we have uh, 1, 2, 2. So the magnitude of w will be the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared. So 1 plus 4 plus 4. Um, well, that's the square root of 9, which in this case, that's kind of convenient. We actually get a whole number out. That usually doesn't happen when we're finding these magnitudes. We typically get a radical. This time we get 3. All right, so that means that a unit vector in the direction of w will be 1 over the magnitude, so 1 over 3 times the original vector, 1, 2, 2. So that is 1 third, 2 thirds, and 2 thirds. OK, we've got our unit vectors. Now. Um, what about this last part? A vector of magnitude 5 in the direction of w, right? Um, well, remember we sort of have the property sitting down here, right? Um, the magnitude of a scalar multiple of a vector is that scalar times the magnitude of the vector. And we know that this unit vector down here, uw, is in the direction of w and it has a magnitude of 1, right? So if I want a vector of magnitude 5, well, that's 5 times 1. So I should multiply by the scalar 5, right? Um, and so, I don't know, let's give this vector, let's give it a name. Let's see, we've used u, we use u, v, w, let's call it, I don't know, a. Why not? Okay, so a would simply be 5 times the vector u, w. So that's going to be uh, 5 times all of those. So 5 times a third is 5 thirds, and then 10 thirds, and then 10 thirds again. Okay. Um, now, if you want to actually confirm that that worked, I mean, either you trust the theorem or you go ahead and you actually compute the magnitude. So if we were to compute the magnitude of this, you know, what would we, what would we find? Um, I don't know, let's squeeze it in here, right? Magnitude of A, we would get 5 thirds squared, so 25 over 9, 100 over 3 squared, or sorry, 10 over 3 squared is 100 over 9, and then 100 over 9. Okay, so the square root of? 225 over 9. Um, now, 225 happens to be divisible by 9, conveniently enough. 
Uh, let's see. So 9 goes into 225. Um, let's see. Twice. Bring down the 4. Um, square root of 25, of course. Right? We get that magnitude of 5 that we were expecting. So it works out.